Hi there, today I'm going to be talking about open type fonts and how we can access the alternate characters that they offer on the iPad. So open type fonts give you options for different characters so that you can mix up your character choice throughout a typography piece. So perhaps you had a G on the end that you'd like to add a flourish. Open type supply a few different glyphs for certain letters and some in some cases all letters and you can choose whichever one suits your project the best. They're also great inspiration for flourishes as well so if you're a calligraphy and lettering artist and you're on the lookout for some good flourishes and different ways of lettering a project looking at a font can sometimes really get your creative juices flowing. So this version on the left is using the standard characters. This particular font is Mozart script and I'll drop a link in the description below if you want to check that out. And then over on the right here you can see the same but this time we're using alternate characters. So there's a different version of the Y here, you can see that flourish coming out to the right and even the S here there's a different variation that the lead in stroke interacts with the bottom of the Y. So you can see again the M, the flourish coming down here and the A that's dropping below the K. So there's a nice balance going on. So we'll be looking at that in Affinity Designer. And I use Affinity Designer for vectorizing usually, but this is the second reason I really like it. There's another reason I love to use it is for um, changing the color profile to CMYK for printing. So I've got another video on that if you're interested to know that process, because you can't export a CMYK from Procreate directly. So that's another reason Affinity works really well in combination with Procreate. So when we're in Affinity here, to create a new document, you just tap this plus sign at the top and I'm not going to worry too much about the settings, I'll just leave that at their defaults. I'm going to change my colour to black just tapping on the wheel and then I'll tap on my text tool and just type always. I'll double tap to select it and now I just want to increase the font size to see what we're doing. I'll select the arrow and move it towards the centre to just see it a bit better and now I'll double tap and I can change the font. So you'll see the font drop down box on the left hand side of this panel here and I've already got this font installed but just say you didn't. The font name is Mozart Script so just say you've got Mozart Script now and you've downloaded that and put it on Dropbox or iCloud. All we need to do is to from the dashboard here come up to this little settings icon in the top right and then we come into fonts and you can see I've got it installed here. Here's all the variations but if you didn't you just tap that cloud icon and then navigate to where you saved it and choose the font. So there you go it's really easy to to install fonts in Affinity. Okay so back to our project so we just need to double tap on here now and just scroll down the list until you find your font so we'll tap Mozart here. So by holding two fingers on the screen here and just dragging this first layer I can make a duplicate of the text layer. Double tap to select the word and this next line is B and then just tap your arrow tool and just move it more into the center here but don't worry too much about the positioning for now we're going to adjust all of that later. So now for our third text layer two fingers on the screen again and then just drag the B layer. Double tap that and we'll type making. So we've got all our text, we can look at the positioning now. I'm just going to move making in a bit closer and the word B is just a little bit big at the moment so I'm going to just scale that down and by holding two fingers on the screen that will just keep it in proportion so you don't distort the word. So we've got the general layout now, um, we can get a bit more precise later but for the moment that's fine and I'm just going to select the A here. So to access your alternate characters we just tap this A on the right menu here and that fly out menu will reveal and you can see open type here and under alt alternatives which is a bit of a mouthful we've got our alternatives and we can just flick through the various options until we find the one we like. I'll go with the original design which was this one. Okay that's great so the other letter that we want to alter is the letter Y so I'll just select that here. Go back to our typography panel and the open type and just click through here. You just need to basically keep going until you get the one you want. For the B I just want to move that up a little bit but that's also got an alternate on there as well and we'll just go through the list until we find that one. And now we'll just do the M so we'll select that here and the panel's still open so I can just flick through 
until we see the one that we want. And so not everything is going to work in the position of the letter that you have. So um, this is the beginning of the word. So it's it's got some that are better suited to the ending of a word. But that's just part of it. You flick through until you find the appropriate one because there's a lot of variations. So the K is sitting nicely under the Y there. Now finally I just want that G to be flicking out to the right here. So I just want to position this on the screen better so I just need to uh, choose this down here, this add to selection and tap on the layers to select them. You'll see a blue highlight to tell that you've got those selected. So now I just want to scale that down so I'm just going to make sure that's proportional and position it into the centre. Okay great, so everything's pretty much in position here. I might just slide this B down so it's not quite so close to the always text. So we've got a couple of options here. This last bit is optional. If you're happy to stay in Affinity and work from there, then you are good to go and you can do all your colouring and textures um, or any edits that you want to do in there. But if you prefer Procreate for that sort of thing, I'm going to show you how you can now export this and bring it into Procreate. I didn't actually find it particularly user friendly to export from Affinity as a PNG without the background. So I have put in that research for you, so I'm happy to share that with you. So the first step is to just make sure that everything's selected. So select all your layers again and just go to this icon at the top left and choose export. And under area here, you can open this drop down and choose selection without background. So as long as that's selected, then you're going to get the layers themselves without the background. Instead of exporting, we're just going to go down to this share option here and tap that and then choose the Procreate icon from the little panel. So now it's sending to Procreate. And if we go into Procreate, we can see it's importing and you can see the file here. So that's in here as a separate layer. So the background is independent of the typography. You can change the background color. You can come and change the, uh, the font layer by alpha locking and then filling the layer. And you can fill it with another color and generally just do whatever you like in Procreate now. So there you go. That's how we make a hand lettered feel from typography using alternate characters. So I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial and like always just give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you share this with someone you think that would enjoy it, that really helps. And if you have any requests for tutorials that you would like from me in the future, please feel free to leave a comment and let me know. So I'll see you next time. Bye.